And joining us once again to answer your Facebook questions about the coronavirus is the Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. All right, ready, Doc? A lot of questions. You bet. All right, the first question is from Cassietta Joyner. She wants to know, with the high case counts, why don't we go back to testing everyone who travels here? The main challenge is that that number of tests would be 30,000 tests a day. We do our very best to get to nine or 10,000 tests a day. The sheer volume would overwhelm us. But it is important to note that nobody should be traveling if they're not fully vaccinated. And then we should do extra testing where we can because that did uh, prevent the spread. The Safe Travels program I helped build with our team uh, was really the answer to keeping cases down. The next question is from Paul. He wants to know, is the state inflating COVID cases? I heard that any viruses detected on a PCR test besides COVID are classified as COVID in the daily count. Is that true? Uh, no, we're not inflating the case counts at all. In fact, I've asked them to be a little bit more conservative and cautious at the Department of Health. The reason you are seeing more cases counted is because we're up from about 4,000 tests a day to eight or 9,000 tests a day on average. And with the positivity rate sitting at 8%, it's easy to do the math. That's why we're getting case counts between five, six, and 700 a day. But it's good to know where the cases are because that's how you fight it. The next question is from Craig. He wants to know, I see football games on TV with packed crowds, the Little League World Series, with fans cheering. Why can't we have the same with UH football and their new field on campus or high school football? Because those places are taking a great risk and they're killing their citizens, uh, we're just inclined to kill our citizens. I think it's better to be safe. Only people who are vaccinated should be in stands whatsoever. And when we bring the case counts down, we'll be able to open up a lot more. But this is a time to protect our loved ones. The next question is from Sherry. She wants to know, with hospitals overwhelmed, has there been any consideration about bringing in a hospital ship to help out? Yes, my team actually worked to get the Mercy ship to come and be docked here. And over the next um, period of months or years, I'll continue to fight for that. It became a big political battle because a lot of other people want that ship as well. And it's very expensive and far to get it to come here. We thought at one point to do that for the homeless crisis and also, of course, to quarantine people who have been victims of the surge. Uh, but mainly what we have to do is vaccinate people. Simply by vaccinating 100,000 people, we'll stop 5,000 hospitalizations and 500 deaths. That's really the answer. The next question is from Nola Faria. She wants to know, have you heard anything about when the Pfizer vaccine might be available for children under 12? I think it'll be in November, maybe late October at the earliest. What that means is we'll be able to get people vaccinated who are young, if parents choose to do that with their families, deeply personal choice, before the second semester starts for this year, meaning you would get the kids their two shots uh, before Christmas time. That will help a lot because spread amongst young people has been significant. About 18% of all of our cases have been among young uh, children under age 18. It is also very important that we keep kids in school to the best of our ability. I'll tell you though, my son, Sammy, is now in home quarantine because there was a positive case in his class. We, like every other family, are wrestling with this, but that was the right decision to prevent extra spread. All right, the next question is from Coleco Lincoln, who wants to know, is there a mobile COVID testing service? I know many Kapuna might feel sick and they can't get to a site. There are, there are multiple sites and I was really uh, happy to hear what the city council uh, has proposed. Very smart uh, suggestions to enhance all of those testing sites. Right now, of course, you can go to different pharmacies to get tested and there are some pop-up sites several days a week, but we need to have a lot more. The airport has been pretty efficient, and I'm glad that the administration is continuing that program. It's not cheap, but it is definitely in our public health interest, and we can get reimbursements from the federal government for these tests. So please, everyone, if you have any symptoms at all, get tested. And if you are, of course, in close contact with anyone who's had COVID, get tested. Overall, though, the main thing that you need to do is encourage dear friends, close family to get vaccinated until we get well vaccinated as a society. And we're second or third best in the country, but we're still seeing this surge in cases because the Delta variant spreads to everyone who's not vaccinated. Until we see that happen, none of these other solutions are gonna be that impactful. All right, there you have it, the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you very much, Dr. Green, for answering all those questions. We had a lot of them this morning.